Hello, lovers. You're listening to episode 22 of the Nutrition Nuptials podcast. A few announcements before we get into today's double date. To start off with, if you are looking for the show out in the social realm, two places you can find us. First is over on Facebook. You can like our page. We are at the Nutrition Nuptials VIP After Party over on Facebook. And that's where we keep the conversation going after the show. So we post a question after every show. We talk about any giveaways and happenings that we have. So make sure you head on over and like the show. We also like to share some really fun sound bites. Another place that we love to share sound bites, that is over on Instagram. And you can find us at Nutrition Nuptials Podcast over on Instagram. That is not only where we share some teasers from the show, but we also share some fun giveaway info and also just some really fun food photos. Who knew that you can have so much fun with love and hearts when it comes to food? I even have a couple of uh, proposals made out of donuts shared on that Instagram page. So head on over, like us, follow us, and let us know what it is that you're loving about life and the show. Speaking of which, We still have our survey out there for our season one feedback from you guys. So if you head on over to bit.ly slash NN1survey, you can complete a really short survey all about season one of the show. It's three questions. What do you like? What do you not like? And what do you want to be hearing? And um, that's it. And just for taking that little bit of time, you will be entered to win a $50 Amazon gift card. So check that out. We'll also include a link to that in our show notes, as well as if you're on our email list, you will get that as well. That link is going to be open until April 30th. So make sure you head on over and get yourself entered to win an Amazon gift card. And with that said, if you're not on our email list, easy way that you can get onto that list, all you got to do is head over to nutritionnuptials.com slash starter guide. You're going to get an awesome freebie of a five-day meal plan, fitness, and self-care guide that you can have, work on with your significant other, and just another way to go from a me to a we with yourselves and your loved ones. And finally, a shout out to the awesome crew at Podigy. Podigy is our podcast editing crew. They help us with editing the show, making it sound great because we have no idea how to do all this back-end technical stuff. And quite frankly, I don't want to learn it because there's experts out there like the crew at Podigy that can do it for us. If you have a podcast or you're thinking of starting a podcast and you want some help with some of this technical stuff, don't go online. Don't go searching and watching a million YouTube videos. Just head out over and check out Podigy. That's P-O-D-I-G-Y dot C-O, Podigy dot co. And all you got to do is tell them Taco and Mandy sent you from Nutrition Nuptials. You'll get 25% off your first month of editing. And they're just a great, a great group of people to work with. So check them out. And with that said, it is time to jump into our double date episode. Let's hit the music. It's the Nutrition Nuptials Podcast with Taco and Mandy, where we're helping couples learn how to live their happily, healthfully ever after. Hey, Taco, guess what? What's up? It's double date time. All right. And we actually have a guest on today who... Everyone's been hearing pretty much since the podcast has started. I know. It's pretty exciting. It's really exciting because we have today on our um, musician for the show, we have Lisa and Quinn English. Lisa has done most of the music for the show, including Taco's favorite song. Taco Terminology. (laughs) Yes. Played it multiple times. Awesome. Oh, yes. That's my favorite, too. (laughs) We got the sass on that one. We got a little sassy for you. Yeah. Yeah, well, I've got questions about that. We're, we're going to ask about that. All right. So let's introduce you guys, Quinn and Lisa English. You guys are two local Jersey real estate agents and musicians. Lisa is a broker manager of a new Atlantic Highlands location for O'Brien Realty. And Quinn works with his father doing land use permitting for the English group, in addition to working on the real estate team with Lisa. Both have played in several bands, including Lions, Plus Plus Minus, and Good Night Morning. Welcome, Lisa and Quinn. Hey. Hey. How's it going? It's going pretty awesome. We're doing well. And in, okay, so I'm going to jump right into it. Like, we'll get to like the, the nutrition stuff. But Lisa, the 
question everybody wants to know is, what was your inspiration for taco terminology? Okay. So taco terminology, that was a tough one. I actually had like five different passes on that one. Like we did five different versions. Um, I had the overall like, <laughs> right, like right out the gate. That uh-huh. was easy. But then we were doing like modulated computer voices, like taco terminology <laughs> and stuff like that. And we were just cracking up in a studio, like, what are we doing? And I'm like, okay, hold on. Let me see if this vocal works. And then once we got like the little sassy part, like taco terminology, we filled in the rest and it kind of came together. It was a little bit of like TLC meets. The white stripes, just something a little driving, but with a little bit of a personality behind it. Got a little James Bond feel to it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a good call. Yeah, I, I could see that. You're a man of mystery. I, I always say Taco's like the super spy with all his world traveling. <laughs> That's great. So I, I picked up on his vibe, I guess. Totally. It fits. It, it fits really well. And I couldn't thank you enough. Oh, good. Well, you're welcome. It's a hit. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> It was really fun to do. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad it was a it was a fun project for you to do. And thank you so much for doing all the awesome music for our show. So we really appreciate it. Lisa and Quinn, one of the first questions I always ask my guests is, "How did you guys meet?" And then you come on and sing about how you met. Yeah, we met playing music together. We were both um, drummers in different bands, both in two-person bands. And uh, we were practicing in the same, this kind of converted warehouse up in Jersey City. Lisa doesn't remember meeting me back then, but I remember her since she was the only girl out of like the, the hundred dirty dudes you'd see walking around in these hallways. <laughs> she was the only girl. So I remembered her before she remembered me. Yeah, you were just one of the 100 dirty dudes. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> gonna be done in the bathroom yeah. <laughs> yeah so that's that's how we originally met up in jersey city and then the two bands we started touring together you know went on a couple local tours and got to know each other better and went from there he was down here in red bank i was in jersey city and you know just started dating from there very cool now did you guys play in the same band together eventually not at first yeah many many years later but Originally, it was just she was in a band with she was playing drums and another guy was playing guitar and I was in a band where I was playing drums and the guy I was playing with played guitar. So it was easy for us to, to travel and put tours together because we could fit both bands and our equipment in one vehicle. Yeah. So that's how we started touring together. And we were both playing drums. And then years later, like what, seven years later, yeah. maybe like our friend Jed was like, ah, I want to start playing music again. And Quinn started playing drums with them and then they needed a bass player. And I'd never really played bass, but I was like, I'd like to try. Let's give it a shot. So that's how Plus Plus Minus was formed. And I'm really happy it was because that like started me on the bass playing path. And uh, I really enjoyed that. So can I just say that I'm insanely jealous of your talent? You're like, oh, I never really played bass before. Let me just pick this up and try and see what happens. And I'm in the band playing bass now. Both of them. Both of them. You guys are both like just insanely <laughs> musically talented, like annoyingly, because we love music. We're just not good at it. Yeah, Lisa is one of those people that can pick up anything and make it sound good. Thanks, guys. I can play drums. Yeah, very, <laughs> very jealous. I took guitar lessons probably about ten years ago at this point. And I could make sounds that sounded like songs, but it didn't come that it didn't like Mandy said, we're music lovers, but it didn't come very naturally to me. I had to work at it really hard. And I just decided I'm gonna focus on things that I'm that come naturally and that I'm good at. Speaking of which, I bought Taco a guitar for Christmas ten years ago. And if anybody would like to um Use it's it or teach. it's a decoration in my office. <laughs> or use it as a decoration. Jeez. Don't start okay. pawning off my guitars. We have guitars. stuff like that too. I think there's a sewing machine for me mm-hmm. and an auto harp, which I bought Quinn. The same year. I think the we got each other those presents. We got presents. each other. We're like, let's get into, you're going to get into auto harp. I'm going to start sewing all the time. And yeah. We I don't just, think either of them have been used yet. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. Big plan. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's still plenty of time in life to pick up auto harp and sewing. Yeah. yeah. So tell us, um, so you guys met and you started touring. So at what point did you guys actually start living together? I was getting evicted, not for mm-hmm. my, not for any bad reason. My, I was living in the basement of my now sister-in-law's brownstone in Jersey City. 
and she decided to sell it and it sold like that. And um, I had to move really quickly. So I secured another rental up in Jersey City, but I had this gap of time for about two months, maybe like in the winter where I needed a place to stay. So Quinn's like, you know, you can stay with me. And I was like, oh, cool. So I moved in with him, quote unquote, temporarily, like, and we kept like, anytime we'd have dinner, we'd look at each other and be like, okay, let's not get used to this. Like, we're not gonna live together after <laughs> this, right? And uh, I just ended up staying. <laughs> I refused to go back to Jersey City. I broke the lease up there. I called the guy. I said, I don't think I'm going to move in. And, you know, he wasn't happy about that. But um, he let me go. And then I moved in permanently. Yeah. So we've been she moved in... into my one, little one bedroom in Red Bank. Yeah. Uh, with her dog. So my plan worked perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> and he fell for it. Yeah. yeah, there was never an apartment I was going to. <laughs> the old, I'm only moving in temporarily bit. That, yep. that always mm-hmm. works. It's a good move. So did it start out as like you got a drawer and then it upgraded to like some space in the closet or you just like brought everything? Yeah, I don't even think I had drawers. I think I only had, had a, a closet and she she got, you know, five of my hangers maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it started. And then yeah. I slowly moved stuff in. I didn't have that much stuff. You didn't. I was, I was pretty minimalist, so. Yeah, I, I didn't come with too much. I came with my dog, a piano, and a couple other things. Those sound like we, some pretty big things to home. come with. Yeah, we found a new yeah. home for the piano. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, I That's just walked by with my piano. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Was this like a walk up? You had to get the piano up too. We didn't actually bring it into that apartment. We kept that in storage until we found the next apartment. Where I was living at the time didn't allow animals, so we. Pretty soon after we realized we were going to be living together, we started looking for something else locally and found uh, something that fit a little better. Cool. So now, were you guys always musicians or like at what point did the real estate aspect come into play? I, I mean, I always played music on some level. I was like a classically trained piano player for most of my life. The music started a lot later for me, like in terms of, you know, playing out in bands. I was 27 when I picked up the drums. And played in a couple local bands and then had the the pleasure of touring with a, a band that was pretty successful internationally for about a year and a half. And after that came to a close, we were getting married in May of 2010. And around then is when I was like, you know what? It's really hard to be on the road. We were away from each other a lot. And it's hard to really build a, a solid life together you know, both traveling. So we kind of, I kind of decided at that point, I think I'm going to stay around and and let me figure out what I can do. And real estate was always an interest of mine. It was either I was going to be a piano teacher, a dog walker or a real estate agent. (laughs) So, um, and she got business cards for each one of those things. (laughs) Just in case. And and great names for all three (laughs) businesses, but we won't get into it. But yeah, so real estate one, I mean, I I had a neighbor that kind of inspired me. She was doing really well in real estate and we became really close friends and I always had an interest in it. So I retook the real estate exam. I passed twice, you know, I passed years before and then I started touring. And then when I got back from tour, I had to take the test again. I took it and then I started working and I really liked it. And I've longest job I've ever had. I've been doing it for eight years. I don't think I've ever had a career or a job where, you know, this is what I do. And I I really enjoy it. And you're going to get really modest, but I think you were also named like Realtor of the Year of New Jersey or something. Mm -hmm. 2016 Realtor of the Year (laughs) from Monmouth and Ocean County. Monmouth and Ocean County. Yes. Oh, you know, only among like 9,000 agents. So no big deal. I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> Guys, I'm blushing. You can't see me, but both been doing well. I like it. Yeah. And then Quinn joined. You want to tell your story? Well, going back, I, I started playing music when I was in high school. Um, I had a drum set from an early age, but didn't really do anything really out. And uh, a couple guys in high school asked me if I wanted to play drums in their band, kind of similar to Lisa. And I said, yeah, I guess I could figure it out. And... um Played in a couple bands in high school, you know, just play local shows in Asbury and stuff. I grew up in the area here and played in some bands in college. And one of those bands, the Gay Blades, is the two-man band that we would play with Lisa's band, Boy Girl. And that uh, that band, we also toured a lot. Um, we were doing it at, po- at one point, like, roughly nine months out of each year on the road. 
like nationally and internationally. And that was when Lisa and I were moved, lived in, uh, lived together. So that was like a little tough at that point, just because it was a lot of back and forth on the road. And that's when she was touring a lot too. So she would be away. I would come home and then, you know, then she would come home and I'd be away. And then sometimes we'd both be away and we'd have to have like somebody to watch the dog for two weeks. Yeah. It was, it was a cool experience. But it was definitely, definitely different, you know, and yeah, yeah, and it was, you know, somewhat early on in our relationship. So and then for real estate, I mean, honestly, it was like maybe two years into when I started or two yeah, a few years, years in. And I just was getting too busy. I couldn't do everything. And Quinn mm-hmm. had, you know, some flexibility with his dad around their business. You know, they do land use permitting. It kind of went hand in hand. And he, he decided to get his license and, you know, we started to do stuff together then. Yes, that was let's see, probably five years ago now. So maybe like yeah, two, three, three and change years after you were into it. Have you ever considered rebranding yourself as the rock star realtors? <laughs> well, it's funny you say that because we have, uh, we have. Do you have business cards for it? No, no, I don't think. Yeah, <laughs> but we do have a podcast that we're starting called "Bring Up the House Music." Aha! Because yeah, because mm-hmm. it intersects the two things we love, which is real estate and music so we figured why not why not talk about it you know kind of similar to you guys like find what you love to talk about and Mm -hmm. and you know make a little podcast out of it so we just did our first episode and um our whole team is musical dan effenberger's on our team and he's a great musician maggie mcquiston um is in good night morning with me she's moved to california but seems like music keeps coming back and that's a strong connection in our real estate world too so it's just kind of Kind of cool, kind of fun. I feel intimidated if I wanted to come work at your office. I feel like I'd have to prepare a whole audition segment. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. you can sing, sing and play tambourine. There you go. Yeah, you can we do need that. a tambourine player. Yes, perfect. <laughs> it's an important role. I mean, it's a hard one. <laughs> it is. I got some rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's like your white girl rhythm don't work here. Yeah. <laughs> nice try. So, Quinn, I got to ask you the question. I'm sure every person asks anyone who's ever played in Asbury Park growing up. I was going to ask this question, too. You can ask Taco. Have you ever played the Stone Pony? <laughs> a ton of times. But, and I played it growing up when it was like, you know, Sunday afternoon, they cram like 12 bands in of 16 year olds back to back to back to back. And um, I think at the time we were like sneak drinking vodka, like in the backseat of <laughs> whoever was old enough to drive us there before we went inside. It was a mess. <laughs> it was a lot, a lot of Sounds fun, but it was great. a mess. Yeah. yeah. My question was going to be, did Bruce ever show up at one of your shows? That was my second question. <laughs> he never, as far as I know, he never showed up at a show. He's showed up like when we're hanging out in Red Bank yeah. more often. We'd just be out like the downtown and he would just all of a sudden turn around and he's been at the corner of the bar. Yeah. And he went to the same gym, you know, mm-hmm. we see him out and about. And there was an epic snowstorm in Red Bank. I didn't think anything was going to be open, but we walked into town and we went to the downtown and it was us, one other person across the bar and then Bruce at the end of the bar. <laughs> there are like four people there. And even though no one else is there, we were like, just leave him alone. Don't bother. And he's <laughs> yeah. having a quiet snowy night for himself. So <laughs> I didn't even recognize him. Which was like, that's Bruce over there. I'm like who? She's like the only other guy in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I ran into yeah. him at the, uh, at the wonder bar in Asbury park. He was watching the Jets mm-hmm. game and having a hamburger. Yeah. He's, he's just like, a normal guy. A normal dude. Yeah. Stars are just like us. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the real reason I brought you guys on. So as, you know, musicians, especially early on in your relationship, first and foremost, like, what was, you know, the the eating situation like being on the road and then coming <laughs> home for a few days and then going back out on the road? Like, how did that come into play or not? I mean, we would have had no ability to cook on the road pretty much so it was so much fast food and i remember at the time lisa was vegetarian is vegetarian now but was vegetarian and we were going to mcdonald's and i mean we everywhere we stopped she could literally eat french fries you know there was there was almost no options for her not that the taco, the meat, bell. taco bell was better because the they best. had like you know bean yeah but um we were eating a lot of fast food in general and i i didn't even notice it until Lisa pointed it out, but we would have to, you know, at least try to find a Taco Bell so she wasn't just eating French fries over and over again from different <laughs> fast food burger joints. 
I had a meltdown. I don't remember where we were. We were in the middle of America and like we were going to a McDonald's and I just started to cry. I was like, I just can't eat French fries again. <laughs> and I left and walked and found like a little hole in the wall Mexican place and got something there. But it's really hard to eat on the road it's healthily. Like, and we've definitely toured with people who just eat beans straight out of cans. And yeah, and we've done that. Yeah, and you just you basically you get canned food that is okay to eat at room temperature. So it was a lot of like. <laughs> Chef Boyer D, all that kind of stuff. Where you just Terrible. open it and take a plastic spoon, and that's your meal. Wow! Yeah, the Chef Boyer D yeah. ravioli straight out of the can. Mm. Yep, yeah, that's it. Oof. I mean, not even that it tastes good warm, but it's it's worse cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is this is the dark underbelly of the music world. Oh, yeah. it's definitely the oh, dark yeah. underbelly food. I mean, I I think most people, and I don't want to speak for everybody, because there's some people who really put concerted effort into like eating well clean, buying vegetables, you know, doing all that. But yeah, it's hard because you have limited time. You you have to like get to your next show. And sometimes you have barely enough time to get there. Oh, and yeah. Make it Most of the time it was show. like a, you, you'd stop at a gas station, get a, a bag of trail mix. And at the time I was drinking like monster energy drinks, you know, to, to drive eight hours straight. So that was literally my diet was like monster and candy <laughs> bars and, and, and Jeff mix Wendy. and like those like, <laughs> And to mince pies and stuff, just garbage. Oh, so bad. A best case scenario was usually if you got to the bar and it was a place that had a restaurant like in it and, you know, they were giving us a free meal. Cause then you could actually get like a real burger or, you know, an actual plate of food. Yeah. But then when we were home, I mean, I eat very, I think pretty healthy at home. Yeah. Like, you know, totally different lifestyle diet just cause you have the ability, the tools, the time. Yeah. And I realized that when I was living with Lisa that I hadn't cooked i don't know since i was 18 or something like a good good 10 years or so where i was just eating takeout you know just pizza and subs and maybe like pasta was like a healthier dish i was having <laughs> yeah so i don't know uh, the last time you guys have been on the road if it's been any time recently within the last five maybe even 10 years have you found that options are better now than they were back when you first started touring? I think if you're in an area that like if you're in Austin or you're, you know, in the Northeast, there are more or options Northwest. or Northwest. Yeah. Middle America. Middle America. There's just really not much. Like unless you're in a town that has like, you know, uh, a kind of newer little downtown that's got people that have that as a priority. It's there, but like college towns and stuff like yeah. that. You can find it, but it's just tough when you're on the road and it's just, you know, you're sleeping after your show and then you're getting up and you're hopping in the car and driving to the next place. It's, it's hard to kind of have find the time the to, to find places, you know, and have it work with your schedule. You mean someone's not sitting there yelping and trying to find the best uh, breakfast taco in the area? Best breakfast tacos. <laughs> <laughs> Any breakfast taco is a good breakfast taco. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was challenging. I mean, don't they call the middle America like, food wasteland or something because it just doesn't doesn't have the same fresh ingredients it doesn't have the same mentality around food i feel like they got corn they got a lot of corn <laughs> we drove past a lot of corn <laughs> um but yeah it, it would be challenging and from a vegetarian perspective at that time it was, it was really hard sometimes like when the thing i'd be eating french fries but i do feel like there's been a nice movement with like vegan food and really more options for vegetarians coming on to even the fast food realm, you know, like with what they've added to their menu. So I think it has gotten better. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everyone wants to respond to what the demand is out there and they know that more people are, are gravitating somewhat towards plant-based eating. So they have to ad adapt to that. Otherwise they're going to lose customers. Yeah. I mean, didn't Taco Bell get in trouble though? Cause they had too much plants in their meat product. Well, that was, a, it, they were calling it, ground beef but then it turned out it was like more vegetable than beef yeah i think it was, I think it was like mostly yeah people were mad they're like no this is supposed to be meat <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it's taco bell you shouldn't expect it to be food yeah. let alone meat people people were angry that they were swapping the the ground beef for like soy product yeah mm. how dare you <laughs> so i have to say out of all the fast food restaurants taco bell is the Probably the only one I have not, and I, I have to be honest, I don't go to a lot of fast food restaurants, but Taco Bell is probably the one I've never eaten anything from. Uh, wow. I know. Definitely. 
That's probably one of the ones I actually will still actually go to. Yeah. Because I don't really go to McDonald's or Burger King. Let's say Wendy's and Taco Bell are the two that I'll even bother stopping at if I'm, if I'm in a pinch. <laughs> yeah, we um we didn't have one close by. Um, I grew up over in Hondo, and we didn't really have one close by there. And then when I went to college, there was a Taco Bell on the downtown, but it was like all the way on the other side of College Avenue where you really had no reason to be there. And it was really, you shouldn't have had a reason to be over on that side of campus. Mm-hmm. So I, I never got into like the late night Taco Bell excursions. You didn't get in the fourth meal? <laughs> well, no, my fourth meal was pizza. Mm-hmm. Dollar Acme pizza slices. Right. Oh, nice. I lived literally behind a Taco Bell my senior year in college. So it was, we legit had a cut through in our fence. <laughs> like we, made a, we made a dedicated gate. We would just go out, go past the back of it. And yeah, it was too tempting. It's too, too easy. So now that uh, your touring days are, well, not that they're over, but you're not doing it as much and you guys are no, they're home. They're over. <laughs> <laughs> They are so over. <laughs> Maybe local tours, but not like, yeah. we're not going. I'm not doing another, like, what, 45 days yeah. since living in a van? No. Living in a van down by the river. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, now that you guys are, are more uh, homebound, how are you guys fitting, you know, nutrition into into your life now that you have the time to, to cook and shop and have control over it? Largely, we've been doing, the last couple of years, we've been jumping in and out of, um, like the, the food box delivery companies, you know, trying the different ones out, Blue Apron and uh, Green, something else. Hello, Fresh Basket. Basket. Yeah. yeah, hello. Um, so we've been doing, and like I said, I hadn't really cooked a lot ever. So that was kind of like my first foray into really cooking often, you know, and doing three meals a week now for the past few years. Again, we've turned it on, turned it off, but that's been the bulk of my cooking and but that's definitely given me a lot of basic cooking skills with which to be able to go to the grocery store and just kind of pick out stuff and make a meal out of it instead of literally not knowing how to do that and having to, to print out a recipe and take it with me and only buy those ingredients and then, you know, throw away all the extras five days later. <laughs> Got it. So you found like yeah. Blue Aprons and HelloFresh kits to be helpful in, in teaching you how to cook. Absolutely. And he also did a boot camp. He did like a three day boot camp with, um, this restaurant called Heirloom Kitchen up in Old Bridge. Oh, yeah, yeah, Their chef just is just on Top Chef. So he's like a great guy, very accessible, does great trainings up there. So he went to a three-day boot camp, and I was so happy. Yeah, I learned a lot there. there. cooking all the time. It was like a three-full-day back-to-back thing. And, like, you know, he started with somewhat basic stuff, and then they take you um one day to a local farm and you just kind of pick stuff that you want to cook with. And then you go to Whole Foods and you just kind of walk around and you just pick anything out of the store. And then you get back and he figures out dishes with all the ingredients that people have picked out and, you know, kind of shows you how to build a dish from these random ingredients. And then like the third day was kind of like a little more elevated stuff, plating, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I just really learned a ton from just being there back to back for three days, especially since it was like a small group and I was able to just ask questions the whole time. Yeah. And how are your knife um, skills? I'd say they're pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Very good with his knife. Yeah, I mean, you do Blue Apron for two years. It's, it's going to be <laughs> tough not to get get a little bit better, you know, because it literally sends you a head of lettuce, two onions, four potatoes. And you're chopping all day long with that stuff. <laughs> oh, I thought everything came, like, all pre-cut. Some of them Some of them do, do but Blue Apron, Blue Apron was, no. it's literally like a bag of vegetables. Yeah. yeah. Which I liked, you know, because then you got, you know, bigger portions i feel like yeah. and your fridge doesn't stink because now the ones we have now they're, they're sending you like a bag of chopped onions and all that stuff smell yeah and then outside of that i mean i'd say especially when i was trying to get pregnant and when i was pregnant i was a lot more conscientious of what i was eating like i tried to do smoothies or overnight oats thank you mandy you're welcome <laughs> in the morning <laughs> something like that or yogurt with fruit and and nuts and just try to, or, or eggs, I would do eggs, just try to get like some good, good start to the day. And then I ate pretty much a vegetarian diet, I tried to have a lot of fresh veggies, and fish a couple nights a week. So yeah. And some meat. And so, oh, well, was... once I got pregnant, well, I was really pescatarian and I do eat eggs too, but um, 20 years of not a whole lot of meat eating went right down the drain 
and I wanted a burger so bad. And then I, I really craved meat during my pregnancy. And yeah. I and I ate it, and then you got to have a lot of wings. <laughs> we had a lot of wings. I, I was happy about. <laughs> I do have to ask a question because I I went over to Lisa Quinn's house maybe a year or two ago. I can't even remember how long it was. Hey, long just a, was it was it that long ago to come over and just talk about nutrition? We went through your cabinets and pantries, and all I remember was you had like a, a downstairs freezer, and it was just like restaurant depot quantities of chicken fingers. Yeah. Do they yeah. still exist? They don't. We I cooked through a lot until uh, <laughs> Lisa said it's time to throw this stuff away. Like chicken doesn't last forever. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I, I had to Google to be proven wrong. I was like, anything lasts forever if it's frozen. <laughs> Apparently that's not the case for a lot of foods. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I think it's time. It's been, these are like two years, three years. We moved with some of this stuff, you know, like into this house three and a half years ago. I think it's time to let it go, babe. We clearly haven't eaten it. And- even the broccoli. We didn't get to the broccoli either. Yeah. Had a huge thing of broccoli then. Yeah. If the if the frozen food moves with you and it's still there, it's probably time to let it go. You could still use it. You could use it to keep other food cold. <laughs> <laughs> you have ice packs for when it yeah. hurts. <laughs> yeah. Here, hold this chicken thigh against your face. <laughs> <laughs> Now, let's talk about, you guys um, just released your greatest hit about three months ago. Aw, yes. June. June Rain English. Miss Baby June. Oh, I was like, what are we talking about? (laughs) (laughs) This is a different (laughs) guy. A different hit. So, now that it's been three months, how has life been adjusting to being new parents? It's awesome. Yeah. We're loving it. We are. It's it's totally a shift in your entire mentality and your lifestyle in part. You know, you have this little person who's now controlling, you know, running the show. Um, she's been a pretty easy baby. Yeah. On wood. I mean, she sleeps pretty well. She eats well. But yeah, it throws your life into a little tailspin because you're just so focused on making sure this little thing is, you know, healthy and happy. And you kind of put your own needs a little bit to the side. But it's been great. It's been great. She's awesome. Yeah, she's been sleeping overnight for the past probably three weeks at this point. Yeah. And she's only three months. Three months today, actually. Yeah. Congrats. So, yeah, yeah it's the awesome. sleep is the hardest part, I think, in the beginning. Yeah, you especially know? in the beginning when it's literally every two hours. You know, you you, you can't, I, I, I feel like you can't even get your brain on track for anything just because and that you're not dealing directly with the baby. You're doing something, you know, you're cleaning the bottles or cleaning the baby clothes or just putting stuff away or just trying to do your own laundry or cook anything, you know, it's just like, it felt like there was no time to do anything. And the days were just like disappearing for those first like two or three weeks. Yeah. But then after that, I felt like we kind of figured it out a little, just, just through being in it. Yeah. Yeah. So as you guys are adjusting to life as new parents, how is that affecting like eating time? Um, well, early on we had, Luckily, we had a lot of people stop by and kind of drop off some prepared food or like prepared food from, you know, local um, restaurants and stuff. I and, ate a lot of soup. Yeah, Lisa was doing a lot of soup. I craved like, soup and I just, I would just be like, oh, are you coming over? Can you grab me some soup? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lentil soup, chicken noodle, and still eating meat at that point. Mm-hmm. I literally was forgetting to eat, which I think just because of not having a lot of sleep my body was so out of whack that I wasn't noticing that I was hungry. And Lisa would ask me, you know, did you eat anything? I'm like, I think so. I had coffee <laughs> and a coffee and it would be like 8 PM. Yeah. Dietitian Mandy says coffee is not food, <laughs> <laughs> but I got this new protein mix. that has got coffee in it. So that counts, I think. Right. <laughs> Better. Yeah. Be so, better. Once, once we got out of that, those first couple of weeks, um, I felt like it got a lot better. And, you know, we, we signed up for another one of those meal delivery kits, which kind of forces us to cook. Whereas I think not having that excuse is, ah, eh, we don't have anything, you know, the baby, blah, blah, blah. We'll just order something, you know, which is never going to be as, as healthy as I would say any meal that gets delivered in one of those kits. Yeah. At least the stuff that I'd be ordering. Yeah. So, Lisa, have you reverted back to more of, like, the pescatarian, vegetarian style of eating? Yeah, I have. I don't... When was the last time I had? It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. 
yeah, it was weird. I mean, like I said, it was like a, a switch that turned on and then kind of turned off, you know, and I had friends who were the opposite. My friend Jenny, who normally loves meat, who could not eat meat during her pregnancy, kind of was a vegetarian, and now she's back to eating meat, you know? So I think, um, yeah, it's just, I think your body just knows you need something or it's kind of running the show. I gave in. <laughs> <laughs> it worked for me. Yeah, it worked for Quinn. He was so yeah. thrilled. He's like, we can get wings? Like, we can get whatever? Like, I could never order that stuff by myself at a restaurant. So I'm eating a whole plate of wings and then trying to have dinner. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I, I suffer a, through some of those buddy. pains uh, with <laughs> uh, beef and pork products. You know, there might be some awesome yeah. looking meatball appetizer or something like that on the menu. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll have to come back with somebody else or friends or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Or take something home. home. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's hard when you can't share food. I will say, like, that's one thing. We've done a decent job of, like, Quinn's not a huge meat eater, but if we're making something, you know, we can make rice and veggies, and then I'll have tofu and he'll have chicken. Or, like, you know, we'll have the protein be different yeah. for each other. Um, so that's something we've done. We've worked around it, and he's been great about trying a lot of, like, the, like, if we make if we make tacos, we can use the fake meat and you know, just like Taco Bell? Yeah, especially when we're doing stuff like that. Just like it. <laughs> just like Taco Bell, yeah. This kind of tastes like meat, but it feels off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we work around it like that. But yeah. So do you guys think when um, June is old enough to start eating, are you? do you think that you would maybe, you know, let her eat whatever she wants? Do you think that you might try and introduce her to more like a plant-based diet? I would like a more plant-based diet, but I think Quinn feels differently. I would, yeah, I think my approach would just be just try a lot of different things and just see what she gravitates towards naturally, um, you know, within the realm of normal, healthy foods, not like just Can't junk food all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put some Skittles and some broccoli down. Let's see what she likes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we'd lose that battle, but yeah, I mean, uh, and most of the stuff that we, you know, they start you on is vegetable and fruit based, you know, mm -hmm. you don't start with a, <laughs> yeah. pureed, a chicken cream way. of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, we will, we'll have to see where, uh, where miss, miss baby June gravitates towards. Ribeye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she likes cheese. Cause that's one of my favorites. Nice. And you can kind of work it into anything. Or it could be standalone. That's a meal in itself. Or just cheese. What do we have for dinner tonight? Cheese. Get crackers. <laughs> exactly. Get some crackers, some accoutrement, and a bottle of wine. She might not be able to do that yet, though. She'll have her own bottle. <laughs> yeah. She'll have her yeah. juice. She'll have some grape juice. Okay. Yeah. Now, how about fitness? And how did that fit in maybe pre-June? And how is that fitting in post-June? We definitely have... I'll speak for us. You can chime in. We definitely have not ever had like a very regimented, you know, workout schedule. We did hire a trainer when uh, previous to getting pregnant, kind of drop a little bit of weight, get a little bit stronger. And that was awesome. Um, mm -hmm. We had our friend Jess, who owns her own little thing, her own little fitness business. She came in and did a couple like, you know, to our ability and skill set trainings. And that was great. I love yoga. That's kind of my pace of, of working out. I love to do yoga and was doing that before the baby. But since the pregnancy and after, I haven't really gotten back on anything, but I'd love to get into some sort of routine. I definitely say it's a, an area where we both can, can develop ourselves. Yeah. I would say one of the biggest downtimes, uh, one of the biggest downsides and working jobs like we do that have these kind of like open floating schedules is it, it's tough to to be able to say like, okay, works over at five. I'll hit the gym at, you know, five 30 on the way home. We'll be home at six 30. And it just always kind of falls last in the priorities of we're running back and forth. Got to drop keys here. Got to grab a sign, you know, swing by, get the baby or whatever, whatever is in the mix. And it's like, by the time we get home, it's time to cook dinner. And then, you know, it just always seems like there has not been time, especially with the baby as, you know, another reason for that. Leading up to the birth, I had actually just started going to yoga for, I was just over a month straight and I was literally going every weekday. And it was 
I was getting a good workout. I know <laughs> it, it, it was me and like seven girls. They're all like just balancing perfectly and, you know, breathing with the teacher. And I'm like shaking, dripping sweat, sliding <laughs> off my mat because the sweat <laughs> is like under my hands. It's a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. We established already. You were already one of the 100, you know, grimy dudes at the at the uh, <laughs> studio before. So like you're just you're you're kind of like the opposite now, right? It's, yeah. it, it's my time to shine, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So come on, Literally step it up, man. From the sweat, yeah. Off of you, you're shining. Yeah. I guess the question is, yeah, were you at a hot yoga studio? No, no. it's nope, a regular sweaty. temperature yoga studio. That's a sweaty dude. <laughs> it's just very difficult to, hold, I guess, hold my own body up. <laughs> hey, you know that guy, Quinn? Yeah, is he the sweaty it. dude? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the only dude. We get a couple of dudes. And I, I primarily practice at a hot yoga studio. And we get a couple of dudes. I have no idea how they stay on their mat the entire time. Because at the end of the class, like, they'll get up and, and go get changed. And their mats there. And it is just in a pool. It's kind of gross. Yeah. 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 Dudes are gross. <laughs> like a couple of teachers, because they usually will will mop down the, the studio afterwards and they just like they just stare at it in disgust. They're like, oh Yeah. That's a, I mean, at least at this one, you bring your own mat. So I think I would yeah. feel weird about having a mat there and sweating all over it. Yeah, but I think for the fitness, like when we do whenever you do like those like your life wheel, like where are you performing well? Mm -hmm. Where are you not focusing? I'd say for the past 10 years, fitness has definitely, for both of us, been you need to focus on this mm -hmm. more. You know, like it's definitely something like Quinn was saying, not in the forefront. I know it should be. But yeah, somewhere where we can definitely improve, like and get some good structures around it. Well, there's different things you can do. I mean, there's tons of mommy and me, and I'm sure there's you know, mommy and me and daddy and me. Um, There's know, probably not classes, <laughs> <laughs> or you could just be the one. Dude. You could just be the one dude <laughs> yeah. at the mommy and me yoga class. <laughs> so everyone will remember you as a sweaty dude with the baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and even now, you know, getting the chance to take advantage of once the sun is out for a little longer, and even just getting out and going for some going for some walks. Yeah, actually, yesterday was because it was so nice out. I took. June out in the stroller and just did like, well, I think like an hour and a half, an almost, and a almost half. two hours, yeah. just walking around the neighborhood, just walking back and forth. I was li listening to an audio book and random neighbors. I wound up actually saying hi to almost everybody in the street. Cause as I was walking back and forth, they would just pop out and see the baby. So, I mean, even that was, I looked at my phone that yesterday's the first day since we've had the baby that I did more than 10,000 steps. Wow. All right. Yeah. So look at, look at little June. She's already a personal trainer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it all comes down to finding something that you enjoy doing, and if it's something you can you can fit in to do together, especially because you guys do have some some crazy schedules and different you know places that you can be. So anytime you can find a way to fit something in together, and you know even if it is just a walk around the neighborhood, it's something that's time to to be together. And don't think of it like it has to be fitness, but more just time to time to spend together. I like that. Yeah, and I think that's something we like doing was like walking the dogs together, you know, so we can walk the dogs, take the baby, that kind of thing. Yeah. Our maniac dog. Yeah. What are their names again? Thormy and Hazel. I think the last time I came over, you you may have just gotten. Who's the younger one? Hazel. Hazel. Yeah. yeah. She's the she's the crazy one. She's the wild card. Yeah. Stormy's nice and steady. He's mm -hmm. a good boy. He's very predictable. He's very manageable. Hazel's a maniac. Yeah. How are they with the baby? They're awesome. They're really fantastic. They're so good. They're, they they come up and sniff her every now and then and lick her face. But they, they kind of, I feel like they keep good boundaries with her. You know, they don't totally. like try to mess with her, you know, because for them, like even if them, they're putting their paw out for something that could can, can scratch it pretty good, they've been really good with her. And, and early on, Hazel was almost being a little like protective of her, like camping out in front of her and just laying down, you know? Yeah. It's cool. Aww. Yeah, it was cool. I feel like she soon changed their energy. Like, as crazy as Hazel is, I think she's mellowed out a little bit. And, you know, no, she's got to behave a little bit more. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Not a whole lot. <laughs> nice. So, 
What advice would you guys give to other couples out there who have inconsistent schedules or might be almost in that ships passing the night where you, you, it's a little hard to, to plan and, and find some time to be together consistently? We had a blog, like a secret blog, kind of, that we could pass back and forth to each other. So I think even if you're not able to do things together, like maybe leaving each other notes or like posting a picture or sharing it with each other, like we're having like a journal that you can share together, like, hey, this is what I did today. Here's what I did today. You know, if you have a goal, common goal in mind, like which I'm a huge fan of, like I'm very goal oriented and I do like, you know, my dream boards and everything and I'm very visual. So I'd say like, you know, sharing pictures and sharing, you know, little stories of what happened for your day and having that commitment yeah i think that's a good way to do it i think the, the meals have been a big part of it because with everything that does go back and forth during the day when we are cooking together or when i'm you know cooking or Lisa's cooking time. we sit down and eat together and that gives us like at least that little amount of time to sit and actually talk and catch up and connect about stuff and yeah and then i think like like lisa said you know just remembering to check in here and there even if it is just a message like thinking to you or something just having those little connections throughout the day that aren't just uh, checking in on business or status and baby and timeline and all the other stuff that, you know, is the, the standard communication back and forth. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So it sounds like you guys are still finding time for each other amidst work and now family obligations. I think we're lucky. And even though we're busy, we do have a lot of time together. Mm-hmm. And on a lot of flexibility. Like I do feel for, uh, I, I don't know how I would have managed, especially the first few weeks if Quinn wasn't able to be here as much as he was. Like I feel for people who are either, you know, single parents or like have a spouse that has a full-time job that they have to go back to right away. Mm -hmm. um, I feel really lucky that we do have some flexibility. We can create, you know, really whatever we want out of it, but we both like to like to do a lot of our work, but yeah, I mean, we have that flexibility and that's huge. That is huge. Like so many people don't have that. That's, that is that is lucky that you guys have that together. Well, you guys have so much stuff going on. And I know you said, even though maybe your touring days are over, it sounds like music is still a big part of your, your life and relationships. So why don't you just uh, give us a heads up on what you have going on or in the pipeline? Well, we Lions, my band, we just released a, a track that's called Islands. And we released a video with that. That just got released on March 6th. Do you guys have a link? Do you have a link to the video? Um, yes, I can give it to you. Awesome. We'll put that in the show notes. Awesome. Um, yeah, so that that we filmed in July of, of last year, Island Beach State Park with JD and Eric, friends of ours, and QC Studios. It came out awesome. We're really happy with it. And that was a way for us because I'm pregnant. I was pregnant. Jenny was pregnant. And Charlene was pregnant. And Charlene just had her baby a couple days ago. So now that that's passed, we like kind of have the video to release to kind of, you know, hold it out until we can start playing out again, hopefully this summer. And then Good Night Morning, my other band, we've just finished a, a recording for a full length album and that should be coming out soon. And then plus plus minus, we're trying to get in the studio. That's the band that Quinn and I are in together. So yeah, we're in the band. It's uh, us and three other people. So we're trying to get in the studio leading into summer. And then we usually play shows down in Asbury in the summer. Yeah. So hopefully we'll be out and playing a few shows. I hope for yeah. the summer, a couple months from now. That was three bands you named there, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's too much fun not to yeah. play. And then we're, we're trying to write some stuff with just the two of us just put together for fun under the name Tight Spaces. Yeah. Tight Spaces coming to you this summer. Yeah. All right. Wow. You guys have more jams like Taco Terminology, maybe. Yeah. yeah. If you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys mentioned about uh, your podcast. So is your podcast out now? Yeah, we released our first our first episode. first episode. I think it just came out. Like it just, just came out a couple days ago. Yeah. Today or yesterday, we posted it out. Um, it's called Bring Up the House Music. It's the first episode is just kind of meeting the team and hearing our backgrounds and music and real estate and why we're doing the podcast at all and um yeah we'll be we'll be taking it from there awesome. cool 
We'll also have a link. We'll link out to uh, to that in the show notes as well, so that people can can check out your podcast. And otherwise, is uh, any other ways to connect with you guys out in the social realm? We're on Facebook, Instagram. We have a physical office for our real estate in Atlantic Island. Um, we just opened there this past year, right on First Avenue. So if anyone's in the Atlantic Highlands area and wants to pop in. Um, we're at 76 First Ave, O'Brien Realty. And we're going to be doing, doing events a, there. Yeah, we're going to do some events. We're doing a, a minimalist event on April 11th. And we're going to have an organizer come and speak about how to organize your life. And we're going to be giving away some books. And it's going to be fun. Yeah. I think we're going to do more more uh, meetups there. So I'd love to talk to you guys about maybe bringing something nutrition-based. Something nutrition, something we could do some yoga. There's all kinds of things that we can we can bring to your people. Cool. Ooh. I'll bring the sweaty dudes. Bring the sweaty dudes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, Taco unfortunately had to jump off. He is uh, had to get onto a call with Australia because it's morning there and not morning here. All right. So Lisa and Quinn, any other final um Words of wisdom before we let you guys get back to Miss Baby June. Words of wisdom. Have fun with it. Have fun with it. <laughs> and I, I say my, I would tell people you can have it all. Like you can have a baby, you can have a business, you can have music, you can have your interests that you're really into. Um, don't limit yourself. That's, that's my message. Yeah, I like that. I love that. So just because you're, you guys are parents now doesn't mean that life has ended. No. no. If anything, I get an excuse to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you guys don't haven't done very much, so this is probably new yeah. territory to you. Yeah, that's it nice. is. <laughs> Learning all the ins and outs it. of Netflix. I like it. I'm like, I'm going to do some laundry. I'm going to get these dishes done. I'm going to clean up the garage. Yeah. Don't get too ambitious there, Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's over a few days, you know. Well, it sounds like you guys are going to have a lot of time to uh, get reacquainted with your with your home and with each other. And I can't wait to see the creations that you guys have coming down with as far as uh, some of your blue apron cooking and um, mm -hmm. some of your other, other meal kits. And uh, I can't wait to check out some of the music. And hopefully we can get to one of your shows this summer. Yeah, sounds good. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us here at the Nutrition Nuptials podcast. And we appreciate you guys taking some time out to uh, chat with us all about your busy lives, your very um, diverse backgrounds from, you know, music and touring together and kind of, uh, we'll, we'll say quote unquote settling down, although it doesn't sound like you guys are really settling down at all. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll just say settling. You're settling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to see, who are we seeing April 1st? DMX. DMX. <laughs> nice. Uh, that was, uh, yeah, the, for Valentine's Day, I got Lisa a, a vacuum and she got me tickets to DMX. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Yeah, and going out. <laughs> fantastic. Well, you guys enjoy that. Have a blast. I can't wait to see some pictures on the Instagram of that outing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us on. Yeah, thank you very much. Of course. Thank you guys again. And thank you again, Lisa, for all of the uh, great music that you've done for our show. We really appreciate it. Oh, thanks for letting me do it. I had a blast. I did it with Paul. Paul Ritchie over at uh, New Future. He's awesome. He was a great co-collaborator and we had a great time with it. So thanks. Absolutely. Uh, well, thank you guys again and we'll chat with you soon. All right. Thanks. Thank you. If you're a couple like Lisa and Quinn who wants to tell us how you're living your best life ever together, or maybe just want to tell us how you are figuring out how you're living your best life ever together, shoot us an email at podcast at nutritionnuptials.com and let us know what you want to talk about on the show. We're also always looking for couples to feature on the blog as well as on our social media. Speaking of which, you can follow the podcast Nutrition Nuptials at nutrition underscore nuptials over on Instagram. And if you want to follow Mandy, the dietitian, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube at Mandy Enright RD. If you're loving the show, that's awesome. Do us a favor and tell us. Head on over to iTunes where you can rate us and leave a review of the show. We love to hear from our fans. We love to know what you're hearing, what you want to be hearing, and it just helps others learn about the show. 
other ways that you can help to support the podcast. You can connect with us over in our Facebook community. That's the Nutrition Nuptials Podcast VIP After Party. It's a free group for anyone to join who wants to connect with other couples, as well as with Taco and Mandy to chat about the episodes. If you have some feedback or want to chat with us about something that we talked about on the show, then we want to hear from you over at the VIP After Party over on Facebook. And if you want to become a super VIP of the show, then you can head on over to Patreon at patreon.com slash nutrition nuptials. You can become a super VIP show supporter. We have options to be a supporter at the dollar, five and $10 level. And you get lots of great benefits depending on which level you decide to join at, including a great discounts, giveaways, and uh, some other options out there for our awesome supporters. If you are looking for some more tips on how to work together as a couple when it comes to your health and wellness goals, head on over to nutritionnuptials.com where you can get info, recipes, fitness, and just all kinds of great tips on how to work together as a couple. With that said, I think our job here is done. Taco has left me to jump onto a conference call because he does that little thing called work. So I am going to send us on out. Thank you guys so much for living your happily, healthfully ever after. And as Taco would say, adios, amigos.